The O's are back in action with their second league game of the season and they're looking for another three points this afternoon and it's a relatively short journey across to Crawley Town where the O's are looking to crash Crawley's cryptocurrency re revolution and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined in the studio this afternoon by Jabo Abire and Brendan Pitcher and there we have shots of the stadium and it's a beautiful day for football Brendan it's a shame that uh, we're in this dark studio on such a lovely day but but a lovely summer's day for uh, for our second game of the season and try, hopefully those can get off to a, a a win on the road yeah absolutely it was a really really good start last weekend kind of uh, did what was expected of us. I think if you're looking at a team that wants to get in the playoffs, wants to get in the top seven, you've got to beat sides like Grimsby at home. And, and it wasn't our best performance. I'm sure Richie Wellens will have seen two or three things he wants to work on. But ultimately, we got the result. And, and that's all that matters at this stage, getting points on the board. And of course, getting points on the board is important, Jabba. But how how big a part is, is, is hitting your checklist at the beginning of the season, your first win, your first win on the road? your strikers getting their first goals. How, how big is it for the O's to get their first away win as soon as possible? Yes, yeah, it's, it's massive. I think going into a new season, you always want to get your first home win, your first away win. You want to you want to get off the mark as a striker as well because if someone else scores, you start feeling that sweat dropping dropping from your head. You know what I mean? So I think <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great um, game today, a great place to go to. And I think uh, they're going to be looking for an away win for sure. Well, no Orient strikers have managed to get off the mark just yet, but there's a debutant who is starting today who might be hoping to change that. And let's take a look through the O starting 11 for this afternoon's fixture. So in goal for Leighton Orient this afternoon, number 22, Lawrence Vigaru. Number two, Tom James. Number five, Dan Happy. Number eight, Craig Clay. Number 10, Ruel Sotiriou. 11, Theo Archibald. 14, George Moncur. We're in the armband, number 18, Darren Prattley. Number 19, Omar Beckles. And as I said, making his debut, number 23, Charlie Kelman. And 32, Rob Hunt. And on the subs bench for the O's this afternoon, Sam Sargent, Shad Oji, Adam Thompson, Paul Smith, Harry Smith, Anthony Georgiou, and Jaden Sweeney. And they are, of course, donning that beautiful gold kit for the first time this afternoon. Um, are you surprised by any of the changes that have been made today? I know they say don't change a win inside, but I think Richie said... We've got a squad, we need to use it. Yeah, we've got a natural number nine up there today, which makes a difference. I think Paul Smith, for me, is probably our most technically gifted footballer and, and one that really excites me, but he's not a natural number nine. He's better kind of running off a, a, a more natural striker. So you've got that today. I'm slightly surprised that he's not starting and maybe it's one of the others that have dropped out, but equally, Ruel, George Moncur, Theo Archibald, all excellent players. So yeah, an exciting from um, three and it really shows like the strength of the squad that we can afford to leave someone like Paul Smith on the bench today. Absolutely. And how, how do you feel about having him as that option on the bench, though? Because, yes, he's, he's not starting. But to have that on the uh, in your arsenal to come on with, with 30 minutes to go with tired legs, do you think that's maybe even a, a tactical decision by, by Richie? Yeah, possibly. I think we all know with Paul Smith that he was so unfortunate with injuries that he's probably the player in that squad you've got to manage the most in terms of his minutes and just making sure he stays fit. So perhaps it's just a bit of over-caution in terms of he picked up an injury in pre-season. You don't want to uh, run him out too early. And then also, like you say, the fact that he is electric. He's, he's so quick on the ball. He's so quick dribbling with the ball. If I'm a Crawley defender and I'm, I've faced Real Soterio, Theo Archibald running at me for 60 minutes and then Paul Smith comes on, I'm going to be thinking, oh no, I'm in for trouble here. Absolutely and the other big change Jabba is obviously Tom James he played in the middle of, of the pitch last week in that holding role scored an unbelievable goal of course but he's been reverted to that right back position and Adam Thompson drops to the bench do you feel as though that's maybe just his more natural position and maybe where Richie will, will hope to see the best performances out of him? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he, he was really dominant and had showed some fantastic performances before his injury last term. And, you know, he'd he done a job. He scored a fantastic goal last week. But I think in that, in his, back in his fullback position, I think he's, he's where he's most comfortable. So, And we saw, obviously, that goal. <laughs> but also a massive part of, of the modern game is fullbacks mm. and, and mm. their goal involvement. I'm not sure if it was the same in your days, but... Mm. His, his his numbers last last season, Tom James, were incredible, and he only played for half a season. Yeah, yeah. He can he can be such a big asset to, the, to this side, even playing in the fullback position. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, and you know, you just want to see him fit. 
um, getting a good run of minutes in games and you know who knows what he can do because he, he, he come in young and he come in from a, a good standard of coming through at Cardiff so you know he, he's got good pedigree in him and it'd be nice to see him get a good run and really lead us this season Absolutely but Adam Thompson might be feeling slightly mm. aggrieved he's been put on the bench this afternoon I don't think that's any anything to, to do with his performance He was he's been solid at right back but again I suppose it's the, the competition that that there is within the squad. Yeah, absolutely. When you've got Tom James there, who for me is one of, if not the best, right back in the division, then you're going to want to play him there. Adam Thompson has done brilliant throughout pre-season. He is your, your, your steady fullback. He, he's not going to yeah. probably provide as many assists and amazing crosses or whatever, but it'll be a solid defensive option. There will be games that, uh, later on in the season, I expect, where maybe he might be preferred to someone like Tom James just for that defensive solidity. But today, we're playing a Crawley side who we'll mention later, but didn't have the greatest of starts. I think you've got to go on the offensive and try and really take the game to them, and Tom James allows you to do that. And we'll talk about what the O's possess in their attacking ability, but Jabbo, it was as well as a great three, three points last Saturday, it was a clean sheet, which, as you say, tick that off the checklist, but Omar Beckles and Dan Happy, that partnership... It, it, it seemed to, to start the season quite strongly. Yeah, it definitely does. They're, they're both really big and imposing. And, you know, you, you start you start the season off, you, you kind of want to, as a, as a defensive unit, you kind of want to get that clean sheet. You want to get a good performance, a solid performance, and build that relationship. And it seems like, you know, they're off to a good start and hopefully it can continue. And Rob Hunt came off injured. It looked just like cramp. He hadn't played mm. for a while. He hadn't trained much at all. Mm. He's now had a week on the training pitch with Richie and the rest of the boys. Are you expecting to maybe see a little bit more from him and, and knowing what Richie has gotten out of him in the past? Mm. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see a lot more from him. Yeah, afternoon. hopefully, because they've worked together a lot in the past and, you know, he knows what he's about. He knows his pedigree, um, you know, and, 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 and getting that coherency, getting everyone, you know, the same. Like, I've always liked defences when everyone knows each other, everyone supports each other, everyone, everyone knows how each other communicates and getting the same people out there and, and progressing in a, in, a, in a way that Richie hopes to see would be massive for them going forward. It certainly will. And what I think maybe wasn't spoken about enough after last Saturday's uh, victory was Darren Prattley. I feel like he's maybe mm. gone without much credit, but for, I think, a 36, 37-year-old, his yeah. energy was, was outstanding. I don't know if that's because it was the first game of the season and he had some fresh legs, <laughs> but... How, how immense was he last Saturday? Yeah, for me, I thought he was man of the match. I mean, Tom James got it because of the the wonderful goal he scored. But for an all-round performance, I thought Darren Prattley was excellent. I think what really struck me about Darren Prattley was one of the um, friendlies earlier in the season where Richie said he took off Darren Prattley after like 70 minutes because he knows he's fit. He doesn't need to get his match sharpness. He, he, think, he feels that Darren Prattley is one of the fittest players at the club. And for a central midfielder who is 37, that is quite remarkable. So, yeah, I think he's so important to this team I think we perhaps didn't see the best of him at times last season but when he's playing like that like he did against Grimsby just harrying defenders winning the ball back and then keeping it simple and giving it to some of the technicians we've got in this team I think it's a real real strength and a real positive of this team and in terms of his position within that midfield three since Richie's come in what what bracket would you have put him in? He's, he's not really playing that holding role we saw under under previous management, really, is he? Yeah, absolutely. I think he, he, he pushes up into a more of like an, an eight kind of role, the kind of box-to-box -box kind of player. He probably doesn't chip in with, with the attacking contributions, but he, he keeps it simple with what he does on the ball. But his real strength is getting about the pitch, winning the ball back, pressing players, leading the press, and, and that leadership that he brings because he's so experienced. And we do have a few younger players in there. So, yeah, I think him and Craig Clay today, I think Craig Clay might be playing slightly deeper as, as a number six, but those two players are very slim, similar in my mind in terms of the way they just keep it simple, win the ball back. It's such an important role for this team because there's players, like we say, such fa fantastic technical players that we've got, but it ultimately you need to get them the ball, and those two players can do that. Mm. And as a seasoned professional yourself, Javo, mm. how, how does a man his age go about getting himself up for pre-season? I think it might be his, his 20th Probably or, or, or whatever. How, 20th, yeah. how does he keep that level and how does he sustain that fitness going into that, that stage of his career? I think um, as, as you get older as well, and if you get a good relationship with your manager, they will know how to sort of like utilise your body because you, you can't, as much as in our mind we feel we can do the same thing we could do 10 years ago, physically we kind of can't. So as long as you get a good manager that understands like, you know, your niggles or you need might need like a, an extra day off the, off the training pitch, that does help. But ultimately you get to know what you need and what your targets and what level you require to be 
your your fitness at your best and only you kind of know that and you get to understand your body so much more than when you were sort of many years ago so I think now he understands himself he could probably go to the manager and say you know what I could do without this and if the manager knows I um, know what I'm going to get from him on a Saturday they give you that sort of like that leeway and he's got a lead that midfield as well he's wearing mm. he's the one wearing the armband a new addition is is a former teammate of yours Jabbo mm. George Monker who mm -hmm. broke the uh, Orient's penalty curse shall mm -hmm. we call it um mm. last last week with his opening goal from mm -hmm. the penalty spot from from your first hand experience mm. how excited are you for what Monker can, yeah, can bring to I, the side I, I was buzzing when um i heard we were like in for him and then when he when he signed i was, I was like yeah this guy's a, a real deal he's a, he's a really good player um, you know, and, and not just on the pitch, off the pitch, it's just a great character in the dressing room. And I think often when teams go on to do well in seasons, it's the dressing room that really fires the team through and gets you through. And he's a great addition for that. But you've seen from the glimpses what you've seen so far. I mean, he's a, he can he can play. He's got great energy, and you know, and, and he's and he's a good technician, and he can score some goals. So I'm really excited for him, and he can really be a big part for this season. And you touched on it briefly, Brendan, but you expect Cray Clay to maybe play a little bit deeper today. George and, and, and Prattley, George Monker and Darren Prattley maybe being a bit more advanced, but what do you expect from, from that midfield three and how will it differ from, from, from how it was last, last week with uh, Tom James in there? Yeah, it's slightly different because you'd regard Tom James as kind of, he, he was in there as more of a, a, a natural number six, even though he wasn't natural, he's a right back, but in terms of what you'd expect a number six to do in terms of being able to pick the ball up from deep and dictate the play and that's what he, he tried to do at times on, on Saturday against Grimsby, whereas Cray Clay I think will try and play in that role, but we all know what Cray Clay's about, he's a ball winner, he's, he's going to try and get about the pitch and, and it will be slightly unnatural to him in terms of trying to sit in there, but I'm sure that's the role that Richie Wones will be asking him to do today. And obviously, we've mentioned Prattley, he's going to be the one harassing, getting the ball, giving it to, to George Monker, who I think will be playing slightly more advanced, maybe almost up in that, that number 10 role and trying to dictate the play. And, and we saw him flashes against Grimsby. I don't think it was uh, an amazing performance by him, but you saw him flashes what he's capable of. He can just turn it on drive past a man and, uh, and pick out a pass. And that's just something that I feel we've really, really lacked in recent years at Orient, that kind of midfielder that can chip in with a goal, but also just kind of pick the ball, drive with it and, and pick out a pass. And how crucial is that for, for our attack as well? And you, we, it, it, we don't even really need to talk about the talent that the O's have in the wide areas and, and, and through the middle with some of the exciting talent that we do have. Yeah. But how, how key is George that for, for linking that play? Yeah, it's huge, you know, because <coughs> Rail likes to sometimes run off um, defenders and, and look to get in behind. And you've got someone like George driving with the ball, it's just going to draw out the opposing centre half or defender and then create a gap where he can slide balls through for the forwards to get on. So I think he's going to create so much mayhem, um, so many more opportunities and for our, for our technicians up front to try and get more goals because we already see the shot averages going up. We're looking more exciting and, you know, long may it continue. Mm. And let's take a look at those attacking players then. Starting off with the wide areas, you've got Theo Archibald, who we all know what he can do, and you've got Ruel Sotiriou, who, again, we, we know when he, when he gets his chances, he'll finish them. Mm. Are you expecting a bit more from them today, maybe? They they grew into the game against yeah. Grimsby, but how important is it for our attackers to, to get off the mark nice and quickly? Yeah, I think it is. I think as <clears throat> as the games come thick and fast at the start of the season, you know, one game, two games, three games, you're like thinking, oh, I haven't, I haven't got my goal, I haven't done this or that yet. So I think... Both both players who have that in the back of their mind, you know, they want to get their shots and they want to kind of get their goals. So, you know, um, they'll be hoping and they'll be itching and, and taking all the shots they can get during the game today. And we can see Charlie Kelman there in the shot just, just now, Brendan. And he's making his debut, suspended last week. Um, he's he's the, that, that spearhead of the attack today. Slightly different to, to what we had with Paul Smith uh, as, as that number nine. What are you expecting from the new signing? Yeah, I think in, in terms of, we've said we were lacking a natural number nine, and I think he's that type of player where I think we've created chances, especially in pre-season, where if there's just a poacher in the box who, who is on the end of those chances, we could have got a lot more goals. And, and, and no offence to Paul Smith, but he's not that type of player. He tries to hang about and kind of, he, he doesn't have that natural eye for goal that, that Charlie Kelman does. He's, he's perhaps been a bit unfortunate in his career in terms of, he, he, he started off at South End as, as a sort of the wonder kid breaking through. And, and unfortunately, because of off the field troubles at South End, he had to move and, and went to QPR, which as, as you can imagine, trying to break into a championship team at his age was tough. So he went on Loan to Chillingham. Unfortunately, had a bit of a fallout with with the previous manager there. Got sent back. 
that manager then got sacked and he went back to Gillingham and start and ended the season last season in League One by all accounts pretty well, picking up a couple of goals and, and assists and, and, and he now he's trying to kick on in a team where he's gonna be settled, he's gonna be he's here for the whole season now and this is hopefully the the start of what can be a big season for him. You took the words out of my mouth there because as you said He's, he's had so many clubs, he's had his, his problems with, with management and at different clubs, but do you think maybe it might only be a loan sign, but we saw what Theo Archibald did last season when he spent a season alone here and, and how settled he became. Do you think he could play a big part in this squad? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we, there's going to be a lot of games if we're going to if we're going to challenge this season. We're, we're going to play a lot of games, and and there's going to be rotation between all of the front players. I think um, Richie Wells made that key in his in his interview. And and, and look, we need. I think. We need a natural finisher. I think Charlie Kelman can be that man. Even if it's a case of 20 minutes to go and we need a goal, he can do that because I think by all accounts from stuff I've heard from him at QPR in training, he was an excellent finisher, even against uh, up against championship strikers. And from what I've heard at, at Orient training, he's not been doing too bad so far as well. Mm. And this is the first time he's dropped below League One mm. um, in, in his career. <coughs> um, what do you think that challenge might but, but give give him because it's it could it's a slightly different game plan in league one to league two i expect and it, it might be a slightly different challenge for him yeah i mean um he's, he's he's been touted around for a while and especially when he came through as a, as a, as a young starlet as well everyone was like oh this young kids blah 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 so i think drop it coming down to to league two is, is, is another fantastic stage for him to really make a name for himself and i think he'll you know he'll, re he'll relish the opportunity because he, he he's here. He wants to establish himself to go to go back up and go back to um, QPR with, with a bit more with a bit more vigor about him. But I think he'll he'll, he'll relish it, and um, you know it's, I don't think it'd be any easier because I think this league's definitely a bit more physical. Um, but I think he'd be up for the challenge. What I'll, I'll also say mm. is that. He was playing in League One, but mm. they were for struggling League One sides. Mm. They were for Southend, who got relegated, Gillingham, mm. who got relegated. So mm. he's not played in a team that have got a lot of the ball, going to create a lot of chances, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to be a team that Orient are this season. Mm. So could be a difference maker for him in terms of you look at his record; it's not massively impressive, but he has played for for struggling teams that don't create many chances. Mm. Well, we all know how many chances the O's are able to create when they're on on form, uh, and uh, we're going to come on to Crawley very shortly. But first. Let's hear the thoughts of the O's head coach, Richie Wellens. We have a good start at the weekend against Grimsby Town and I guess a good week on the training pitch too. Yeah, whenever you win on the first day of the season, it's a good start. I think in patches, we was a little bit off it and we have to give uh, Grimsby a, a bit of credit for that because it caused a few problems. But um, we made a lot of chances without really having a lot of stability in the game. Um, I think the last 20, 25 minutes was really good. We overpowered and we put the ball in areas that they didn't want the ball to be in and, and we and we just pressured and, and in the 25 minutes when they're chasing the game they didn't really make a chance so really pleasing with that um, good start but it, that's all it is it's just one result so we need to, to make sure we, we stay on the same level mm. Where specifically are you, you looking for your teams to improve this weekend? Um, well we're playing a totally different team a team that have got a new manager and a new a new way of playing that will take time for him to implement his ideas on the players they've got a lot of new players so um Tactical will be a lot different this week than what we was la than what was last 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 week because simply they, they play a totally different game to what Grimsby do. Terms of you mentioned a bit of a change there and a very different proposition to when we went there at the back end of last season. Yeah, and, and obviously again a new manager, a lot of new players, a lot of players that you know you look at someone like Dion Conroy and Telford, proven players at this level, but then obviously they've got a lot of um, loans from Premier League teams. So um, I think they'll be a good team. Um, when, once they're given time, you know I've obviously watched the QPR friendly and the, and the the Carlisle game, uh, which was their first game, and you know they're going to they play a play a nice style of football, but obviously it takes time for him to get his ideas across. So um, you know we need to be guarded. They'll be looking for a reaction from that Carlisle game, and we just need to make sure that if we do the basics right, then it'll stand. It was good. Give us a good platform in the game. Mm. Kickoff is 10 minutes away now, and don't forget if you're watching live on our YouTube show, then if you're a UK fan, you can head over to the Orient website and pick up an audio pass, or if you're an international fan, you can go and pick up a match pass to watch along, and the website is on screen, that's latestonorient.com forward slash live, so do go over there and head your pass to follow along. Um, and now let's take a look 
at the opposition for this afternoon's game in the form of Crawley Town. So there's been a lot of change for Crawley in this summer just gone, but the starting 11 for them this afternoon in goal number 34, Corey Adai. Number three, Dion Conroy. Number four, George Francombe. Number seven, James Tilly. Nine, Tom Nichols. 16, Toby Amole. Number 19, Dom Telford. Number 20, James Balag Balagizi. Number 23, Travis Johnson. 28, Teddy Jenks. And 39, Jake Hessen Tyler. And on the bench for the Red Devils, Greensall, Powell, Nadizan, Fran Francolette, Appia and Ugungbo. Um, and so there's a fair few new faces for Crawley in there today and they'll be looking to get off to a strong start in their first home game following their defeat on the road to Carlisle. But some big names in there, Brendan, um, but they haven't had the best of starts of the season. So what, what do you actually expect from this Crawley side? Yeah, it's been well publicised. They've probably been the most publicised League Two club of the summer in terms of they had that um, crypto takeover with, with um, their American owners and, and now they've brought in Kevin Betsy, who was Arsenal's under-23s manager and got off to a pretty poor start by all accounts, losing 1-0 at Carlisle. But if you look deeper at the stats, 1-0 away at Carlisle, a tough place to go, not the end of the world. But if you look deeper at the stats, 68% possession they had, but they didn't create a shot on target. And that tells me they're kind of passing the ball around for the sake of passing the ball around. Mm -hmm. They conceded the most shots in the division last weekend, 23 shots, despite having 68% of the possession. So that tells you when they lose the ball, they're very vulnerable to the counter-attack. So it's going to be a case of, can Orient exploit that today? I hope so. You look at some previous managers who have done well in League Two, Jabbo. You had you had Cambridge a couple of seasons ago. You had Forest Green Rovers last year. Young managers who are maybe something of an unknown that kick on and do well. Do you feel as though this is what Crawley are going for here? You, you, you know their man and, and it might take a while, but it, it, it might work still. It, it might take a while. I mean, <clears throat> sometimes you get these young managers come in and, you know, with great ideas and, but sometimes you've got to understand the league you're in as well. And, you know, having these great ideas, but you have to have the, sort of the right players to, you know, to implement those. And I don't know, judging what Brendan just said, alluding to that, I just think, you know, you've got to just play the league as well sometimes and overplaying and especially coming from being a 23s manager and adopting that style in League Two, I think they suffered and possibly suffered from that in, in last week's game. So I think they're still finding their feet and what the manager wants, but it could be tricky for them. Mm. They've got some talent in their, in their ranks though, of course. I think their main marquee signing after the, the new owners came in was was going out and getting League's two top scorer from last season, Dom Telford. I think that shocked a few, but were you surprised to see him turn up in a Crawley shirt? Yeah, it's a big, big signing for the level. Of course, he did mm. excellently well for, for Newport last season and, and was the league's top scorer. And he's a player that's knocked about League Two for many years and got promoted, I think, from this division with both Plymouth and Berry. I'm not massively convinced maybe he can keep up that scoring record. I think last season was... Uh, an amazing season for him but before that he'd only ever scored his best um, scoring season was six goals so he is I think for me he's a very very good striker for the level but whether he's the absolute sure thing where you think of a 20 goal season striker and, and the amount of money they're probably having to pay for him it'll be interesting to see if they can kind of recreate the same conditions that Newport did for him because I think Newport played a very attacking style of football where they created a lot of chances so if Crawley can do that for him then maybe he can get 20 goals but if they're not going to create any shots on target like they did last last weekend it's going to be tough I don't think he's the type of player that can create something out of nothing and if we see some of the clips from Dom Telford here what 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 do you think it is that the O's defence need to be really switched on for for from Dom this afternoon yeah look let's see here um a lot of it is kind of his movement and, and running in behind and he, he's obviously if you're scoring 20 20 plus goals in league two you're going to be a very very good finisher and it's just about I think more about what Orient can do in terms of limiting Crawley, getting the ball to him, giving him opportunities. Because, like I said, I don't think he's the type of player that is going to create something out of nothing. And it, obviously, it goes without saying, like, like they did last weekend, not having a shot on target. If you limit them to that, then Dom Telford's going to have a quiet afternoon. So for Orient, it's, you've got to mark Dom Telford, obviously, but it's about stopping the supply to getting into him, really. And we've spoken about Happy and Beckles at the back. Mm. They are big, they're strong. Are you confident that they can keep Dom quiet this afternoon? Well, he's a genuine goal for it, that's for sure. 
Um, but I think the relationship between Happy and Beckles, I think, you know, they're going to be up for it. And I think they're, they're going to be able to look forward to this draw and I think they'll be OK. And do you think this is a case of, I know we're, whether you're away team, but if you look at last weekend's game, if you, you only need to watch the highlights to see mm. the holes in, in Crawley's defence. And that mm. was last weekend. They've probably been working hard on it on the training pitch. Mm. But knowing what we have in our ranks, do you think it's it's crucial that being their first home game, I'm sure their crowd will be up for it. How crucial is it that our attackers really take the game to that defence? Yeah, I, I think it's, it was always going to play at the back of their mind. Obviously, it was an away game. It was a hard place to go to, going all the way to Carlisle to get a result. But going back to um, their home ground, their fans are going to be anticipating something, the new manager. So the pressure is going to be on them. So if we're going to start on the front foot and keep their crowd quiet, then, you know, it will unsettle them and then, you know, good impotence to Orient. So, mm. um, so you know, it's, it's there, but I do think... Um, Crawley, the pressure will be on Crawley. Mm. I mean, this this fixture was played at the same ground only a, a few months back mm. in, in April. How different do you think it will be today? It was a fairly comfortable victory for the O's back then with two goals to the good. Do you expect a slightly different test this afternoon? I think it's very different in terms of how Crawley are going to approach it. I think, I think they've completely overhauled their style of play and, and, and a lot of their playing squad. So, yeah, if I'm Richie Wellens, I'm, I'm looking at last weekend and just saying, look, Crawley, have the ball. I don't, I'm, I'm not bothered. You had 68 <laughs> possession last weekend and you created nothing. So I think if I'm, I'm Richie Wens, I'm saying we can play on the counter and we can hurt them today. Well, hopefully the O's can hurt Crawley this afternoon as we look to pick up our first three points on the road at the first time of asking. But now it's time to pass over to the ultimately capable hands of Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. <laughs> Well, good afternoon and welcome to West Sussex, where the sun is shining, the pitch looks great. I think it's about 14 weeks since we were last here, and it's been all...